Hi, YouTube. Ran out of memory. Imagine that. So, basically, we're in the process of tucking these wires in. And uh, we're just going to pick back up where we left off. One of these days, I might have to get a different camera. One that's an actual camera and not an old cell phone. I'm sure that would help a little bit. If you guys have awesome ideas for cameras, you just let me know. Okay, so at this point we're just trying to kind of jockey the wires around each other so that in the event of a, a would-be short circuit, we're going to have as much insulation between the now exposed copper. I guess that wouldn't necessarily be a short circuit, but if you had exposed copper. I want to make sure that the exposed copper doesn't touch something else, another one of the conductors. so we got them pushed down in there. This side's not fitting quite as good as the other side. And that doesn't surprise me because we had to tape one extra wire up. But I think it's going to end up going smooth here in a minute. Because I think it's going to go. I think everything's going to fit. It's weird too, this one has one less resistor. Because I did two resistors on the other side, and I just did the one on this side. The reason we do two resistors, guys, if I didn't already explain, is because, and that'd be on the red side, um, is that they handle the load of the red LEDs better in a pair. Otherwise, I lose intensity, and I have to go with a higher resistor, which limits the current further to the actual LEDs and it bears the load on the actual resistor itself or okay now I'm going to push down this last little bit there we go guys that actually looks pretty decent I can definitely live with that okay so now let's uh, peel this tape off and very carefully walk this back and I taped a lot of a lot of surface area on that. I shouldn't have taped so much on there. Okay, so just kind of going to where it needs to be and then walking it back. You guys see how I put that tape? I put that tape on so that it would block as much of the servo as possible. And I think it did a pretty good job, that white electrical tape. Looks good, guys. I'm happy with it so far. So now, um, before you move on to the tail light, one thing that needs to happen is we need to hold the wing in a vertical orientation so that we can drip CA. And that's going to help us to make our light distribute a little bit better. And um, the reason you have to do that is otherwise you're not going to be able to see the light from as many angles as I usually want. So in order to do that, you want to kind of, sometimes it's nice to plug in the battery for this step uh, because then you can kind of see where the light's being spread out. And so I'm going to go ahead and plug in the battery. Typically I don't plug in batteries like this when I don't have my receiver on. Um, it's just not a good idea, so I'm going to do it anyway. So hopefully nobody's turning on their DX18 nearby. Ooh, that's gorgeous, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. There's the red. There's your green. So now I need to get this in a situation where...
Let's push my table saw back a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to take my CA. Okay, make sure the cap is not, or make sure it's not all gooped up. Okay, so I've got it on there. Just trying to find a spot where I can do this so that it... I don't even care if it drips on the ground, I just don't want it to... I just don't want to waste a ton of it. And I don't know if you guys can tell in the video, but this really works well. Give it some kicker. If you have a Q-tip, you can observe just a little bit of the excess kicker. So now I need to rotate the plane so that the low point <clears throat> is the other way. Okay? And this is a little on the awkward side, I must say. And I know you guys can tell in the videos, when I'm doing my flight videos, that these things really shine through. Now one other trick you can do that works really nice. Lick your thumb and forefinger and you can actually shape the CA a little bit. Which sounds ridiculous but it's totally true. Okay. Man that's super bright. I love it. Look how nice that looks guys. So far I feel like we can see it from um, quite a wide area too. So I'm going to probably definitely can see it from forward. Definitely. <clears throat> now I just need to do a little bit more up here. Just kind of going for that teardrop-esque shape. And then just get straight into the kicker. Just kicker. Every time. Okay. Then, rotating the plane. In my case, it's awkward because, of course, I got, like, planes all over up here. So I need to try to keep from touching the planes into each other. I don't know if you guys can tell and fully appreciate how much this makes in terms of a difference. It's a huge difference, actually. Really. And you know me. I'm not about drama. Mm -mm. It's just a hilarious joke, guys. I got drips just now. Dang it. I wonder how much one drip of CA costs. I don't know. A lot. Okay. Every time I see this little bumper thing, I think something is slipping out or falling off. Which is super frustrating. Okay, so we got everything flipped upside down now. Now we'll do the other side. Alright guys, I'm just going to let that drip go forward. Dang it. Another drip. Like I said, I don't mind the drips. It's not the end of the world. But it's more just the fact that I know I've got to do more work to try to get it back to where I had hoped it would be. Okay, lick your thumb and forefinger. Shaping. Shaping the work. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back here a little bit. So you guys, you guys wanted to see, didn't you? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that time it was wanting to. He was wanting to set up in the wrong direction, going upward instead of downward. That is looking really good, guys. Really nice looking. Now, the other thing is, if you really want to diffuse that light, it's not as pretty if you do it this way, but it will diffuse the light better, and that is to take a sanding block and rough it up just a little bit. And you'll be surprised how big of a difference this can make. And like I said, it's not quite as pretty having a little bit of sanding on there, but uh, you'll diffuse the light a little bit better. In this case, just got one little blob that's bothering me on here, and once I get that shaped nicely, then. I mean, I, I would like to be able to just see the little LEDs, but <clears throat> not really the end of the world one way or another. I like the shape of this side better. I got a better teardrop going on, and it bulges out further, which means that when I'm looking at it from behind the plane, I'll be able to see it just a little bit, because it reaches out and up beyond where it should, where it should be visible. good let's shut off the main light oh yeah that's good stuff guys nice bright I know it doesn't always do so good in the video boy you guys can't tell us how much it's lightening up the room it's awesome I mean I could conceivably fly like that because you can tell left right orientation from the uh, two points but the trouble is with this goal in this wing, which I hadn't anticipated, is that I think we're going to obstruct the opposite color more so than we would on a, a typical project of mine. And obviously when it's coming towards you, you'll see. When you're turned away, you'll see both. I need to thicken up the top of this one a little bit because it, it gets obstructed too quick. So... And guys, you've seen me do these LEDs. I don't know if I've done this step a lot in the in the videos. But it's like anything else in these projects. The devil's in the details. If you try to get away with without doing these last little finishing touches, you'll have lights, but they just won't be as effective. And if you can get them I've had really good luck with doing this on these projects it's a huge pain in the butt I'll tell you it's a burden it's like uh, every time I get a new plane I feel so compelled to put lights on them that's why I'm super excited about that SR22 that is it the circus is that what's called or Cirrus Cirrus uh, by Horizon Hobby it's gonna be awesome Scale lights, everything. Flaps, slotted flaps, no less. Really excited for it. Right, so, plus it's got safe select. I mean, I don't need safe anymore. I don't really use it. But the thing is, if I was running a hobby company right now, I'd be putting safe on every single aircraft 
and then just you can turn it off it's not like it's on all the time and that just opens up the market you know you've got more people that are able to buy your product and use it and uh, just when you're learning to fly it's so cool to be able to pick a plane that might might also be beautiful instead of just a boring trainer although when you're learning to fly pick a boring trainer it's better you'll learn to fly better you guys see how I'm doing it it's not rocket science I'm basically just building this thing up and uh, eventually now one one compromise to building this up is that it you know presumably is gonna add some weight so you'll need to you don't want to go too nuts on it but uh, just like the tips of your your glue bottles you guys have all dealt with that before same exact scenario we're dealing with the difference is we're doing it we're using the evil for good this evil for good all right guys we're gonna pause it we're gonna get on to the tail light next all right folks tail portion now the tail light historically I always think it's gonna be super easy and um, I'm usually wrong like with other things in this case just remind me that the black line is actually for the positive on this one so when I say that you guys are gonna all be screaming at your TV or your computer you're gonna say Brian don't forget I'm gonna probably forget we'll try not to but still all right so options option one we literally will run this all the way outside potentially just cutting a channel and dropping it in that way that would be option one that option would probably be perfectly fine option two we twist this thing up and ram it in where these things go except not actually in with the control surface we'd go in next to it that might not be a horrible option um, option three We bring it along the side and then we poke it in when we think we can get to a clearing. What I'm going to do in the meantime, right now, since I don't know how this thing's constructed, I'm going to hold this up to the light. And I know you guys may not be able to see as good as I can on this, but I'm just looking for structural leads or uh, bearing, fairings in here, like walls. And I don't really see any but it's super hard to tell on this plane and it's not a real big thick um, build so I gotta be careful about how much I try to um, get in there and once I remove the swing it's gonna be a pain in the butt so what I'd really rather do is you know I could also go up on the top where it's not gonna be a scene um, but again, also a horrible idea that's totally halfway. So I think the only option is to probably open this up and see what we're dealing with first. So that's unfortunately what we're going to do. Sometimes I wish I could just do it the easy way. Okay, so we're going to get this wing off. You've seen that 47 times. We'll come right back. All right, guys, just pulling this frame apart real quick. Uh, it's proven to actually be super handy in terms of coming apart easy. Of course, now with the flaps and stuff in there, we've got even more leads going in. And so we just got to be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate this. Now, one quick understanding to re- refresh our memory on and that is we have these going to a Y cable which goes to the receiver which is in the bind plug where I would normally for whatever reason I just always seem to tap off of that power um, it just seems to work well in applications where I'm trying to pull power for lights so that one's probably not going to be the best option on this plane so I gotta get some foam to hold that up all right so the other thing I'm noticing is that there isn't really a path. This is more or less solid, with the exception of the, the channel for the controls to go through. 
So it's going to be a bear cat to get that wire back. Unless I just chase it with one of the control surfaces. It looks like the control surface for the rudder itself is actually goes back further. So if, if anything, that's where I'm going to be able to chase through. So I'm just going to grab a wire. We're going to see if we can get through with, with this. Um, let's just move the rudder. Okay, so it's this one. Yep, okay, so that's the one we're trying to go through. Now if you have an opened, if you have an open fuse, then you can do all sorts of cool things to figure out a way to get a wire through. Okay, so I'm just chasing this wire alongside that tube. And so far, it feels like I'm penetrating another cavity here. I just want to make sure I'm not poking a nasty hole somewhere. Okay, let's try going the other way with it, guys. Okay, so I'm holding the rudder linkage out. I'm just going to try to slide this rod through on the back side. Okay, this is not super straight. So that's not working real great. Sorry that rhymed. I know I didn't mean for it to rhyme. That was just a coincidence. Okay, there we go. Feels better now. Probably a little bit of glue in there. Oh, there we go. Feels like it's going now. I doubt highly it's going to go where I expect it to. Yeah, it feels like it's just kind of wandering now. So I'm going to hold this up to the light real quick. Yeah, I can't tell. Guys, every once in a while you kind of run into a situation like this where you're thinking, is it really worth it? And you have to kind of decide, you know, is it worth it? And I'm thinking in this application, it's probably worth it to have it nice, but I don't know if it's worth all the trouble to try to pull the wire through because I don't think it's going to add that much cosmetically. So what I'm going to do is, I'm thinking on this one, weirdly enough, I'm probably going to tape it down, but I think I'm going to tape it on the top, maybe. Let's see how it looks. Let's just temp it in. So I'm just going to put this back together temporarily. Get in there. That servo, that Y splitter, has proven to be a pain in the butt because every time I put this back together I have to fight getting the position of those right but I don't I don't really think there's a better option to be honest so it doesn't really matter whatever that's good enough for now okay so let's uh, let's just flop this thing upside down and take a look at the tail we know we're going to get the wire back. It's not It's not like we're not going to be able to do it. It's just more a matter of how much effort we want it to be. We want to make sure that we jump across in an easy area. So, first things first, let's just get this thing glued on here. I want to glue it so that it's pointed downward. And look at this wide spot there. It's perfect. It, since this wire is going to be exposed, I'm going to squeeze the leads together. Now, this is such a wide rudder, it's tempting to try to poke it through. But where are we going to go with it? We're not going through. We're going to go out the bottom somewhere. So I think we're just going to basically glue it on surface-wise like this. And it's just going to be simple. And the more I think about it, the more it doesn't get done. So I'm just going to glue it on. It's possible you've noticed that I'm a bit of an overthinker on this sort of stuff, guys. So I'm just pushing that into the foam just a bit.
Okay, so again, this is one of those where you want to get it secured as quick as possible to prevent your solder joints from having problems. So that CA started to drip, so I, I caught it in time to prevent it from getting too aggressively messed up. Okay. One more layer. Now this one, this one isn't, we're not trying to build it up here, we're just trying to get it totally covered. Of course, we'll flip the plane over and we'll do the other side after a bit. And that will help us to get a nice even drip on both directions. Okay, so now that we've got that done, option one, actually slice the tail. And that'll give us a channel from which to run our cable. Option two, tape the cable flat with white tape. Honestly, that's probably the most tempting. Now the other thing is you can see kind of where I'm going with this. If I chase this up, tape it with white tape, jump her over with a bit of relief so that we don't bear all the load, the side to side movement of the rudder in the wire, I could also just jump down on either side and go to the top. But truthfully, I don't know which way is the better way to go. This is kind of guesswork at this point. I think we're just going to glue it to the outside and then tape over it. Or paint over it. We can paint over it too. Now the thing that's nice about this particular step is we can, um, we can change our mind about this later. It's just a lot more work to, you know, redo it later, of course. I'm just basically holding this, kind of holding that in place. Okay, that worked really nice. That'll hold that just fine. Ow! Hit the wheel again, guys. Okay, so now option one would be to go this way and option two would be to go straight which looks horrible option three we could also cut a channel and we want to avoid the strike pad here of course bearing in mind at some point we do need to add our current limiting resistor I'm almost wondering if it if it just makes better sense to just take a straight path, something like this, right to the bottom, into the cool into the cooling. Because if I drill into this area, it's going to be a heck of a time getting that back out. This is just a piece of tape right here. I could just cut my channel right in the crack. I'm just fearful that if I peel this up, I'm never going to get it to stick back down. And this is just that crappy paint that keeps wearing off. Honestly, this is the way to do it. Oh, I hate doing this, guys. Oh, it hurts my soul to do this. Oh, I know. It's never going to go back down the way it is. We'll just try it. We'll try our best. Just take that, lay it aside. Okay. Sometimes it's painful doing these things, guys. Taking the blade, and chasing it right down this joint, guys. 
Now this time I'm going to be very sparing on how much I remove. Next to nothing, guys. With the understanding that this is going to get covered up somewhat. Probably going to have to cover it with white first and then come back to it. Okay, so now that we've got that slit made, we're going to go ahead and pop it out. Okay, there it is, guys. Well, this kills me to do this. This is painful. If you did this plug right, you could take this whole plug out and put it right back in, but clearly I did not do that. 